Yahoo Research. Um, and I'll be talking about the uh, problem of online ranking with constraints. And this is joint work with my collaborators at Yahoo, uh, Akshay Soni and Troy Chevalier. Um, <clears throat> so consider the sort of operation of an online web portal. Uh, where you have a bunch of items that you're trying to rank and show on, on your, uh, on your uh, portal. Um, and uh, so if you're going to keep track of metrics and uh, sort of evaluate how you're doing, there are uh, multiple different types of metrics or key performance indicators, sometimes called KPIs, uh, that you might actually care about. So what are the different kinds of KPIs that you might care about? So, You'll certainly care about engagement, so maybe that's sort of the average amount of time that a user spends on your web page, also called dwell time. Uh, you, you're going to be showing ads uh, very likely, so you, you'll care about a, uh, ad revenue. But there may be other kinds of KPIs that you actually care about too. For example, if you have publishing partners for, uh, that, uh, whose content you're actually pushing, you may have contracts in place where you say, okay, I'm going to commit to publisher A uh, to give them at least so many premium views or uh, at least a million clicks in the course of uh, whatever amount of time, and so on and so forth. So there could be a whole host of uh, different KPIs that you, um, that you actually care about. Um, now, if you're going to measure these KPIs on a scale of, let's say, 0 to 10, in an ideal world, you would like all of them, like on, on all, all of these KPIs, you'd like to score 10 out of 10. But in practice, this is impossible because there are trade-offs. So for example, if you have two different publishers, um, uh, uh, both of which you're trying to satisfy, there's a fundamental trade-off there because uh, if you're doing well for publisher one, you're probably kind of compromising on, pub on publisher two. And so there are conflicting constraints. and un It's unrealistic to satisfy everyone to the maximum. And you generally need to find a trade-off where everyone is somewhat happy, or what's in optimization often called a Pareto optimal point. So a good trade-off solution uh, might be something like this, where you know uh, everyone is somewhat satisfied. And really, this work is about sort of understanding this trade-off and na trying to navigate that in a principled, optimal way uh, using ranking. Um, now, uh, just to tell you a little bit more about why there is a trade-off, um, uh, the root reason is that there is a positional effect. So consider hypothetically uh, that you have an ad that you show in position one. And let's say that you know, this ad has a click-through rate of, of 0.5 in position one. If you show the same ad at the very bottom of the page, it's likely to have a lower click-through rate, let's say 0.05. So this sort of alludes to exactly why there is a trade-off. Um, it's because there's a positional effect and you know, where you show what content matters. And you can only ever show one item at the top, uh, in, in the top slot of the page, right? And so um, automatically, that means that there's going to be some kind of trade-off. Um, so once you sort of pick a ranking of items, you will have instantiated um, uh, uh, all your different sort of expected values of your KPIs. So uh, you'll have you know, your KPIs for engagement, revenue, et cetera, for that session. And then if you were to show a different ranking or a different permutation of these items, you would have a different instantiation of these uh, uh, of these uh, KPIs, right? And so um, how you choose your rankings actually affects uh, uh, what your trade-offs are going to look like. <clears throat> Finally, uh, the, uh, all of that was for sort of one particular session, but the actual KPIs that you will be computing will be aggregated over many, many sessions that you show in the course of a day or, or a month or whatever, okay? Um, okay, so now I want to kind of start uh, getting towards the actual modeling of this problem. Um, so uh, before I say that, um, let's briefly look at what the architecture at a very high level of such uh, a serving system looks like. Uh, so essentially what you're going to have is a document pool which contains, let's say, you know, n documents. And uh, for each document, you will want to evaluate how it would do for each KPI. So you'll have a click model that tells you, you know, what is the click-through rate. You'll have an engagement model which says that condition on the click, how likely is this particular user to uh, sort of dwell on this document. If it's an ad, you might have uh, some sort of uh, a revenue model and, and so on and so forth. So what this talk is not about is actually the machine learning that goes behind these models. So in this talk, we'll assume that these models are there. You pass your documents to them, you get your scores, right? And we'll even assume that these scores are perfect or ideal. In reality, that's not the case. 
but uh, that's a simplifying assumption we'll make. And once we get these scores, how do we actually blend them to actually get the optimal ranking? Um, so that's sort of the, the uh, high-level problem that we're trying to get to. Um, so what we'll need to be able to sort of uh, model this problem more concretely is uh, a, a somewhat detailed positional model. Okay, so let's say that uh, we have uh, um, n documents that we're considering, and uh, let's say we have n positions in which we can actually place them. Um, so for each KPI, we'll need to form a matrix. So think about maybe click-through rate. What we'll need is a matrix whose ij entry is the probability of a click for, I, for, for that document i if it were shown in position j, okay? So we need this position-specific KPI model for each of these KPIs, okay? And uh, you might say that, you know, maybe that's asking for too much. Maybe uh, if you're working uh, for, for a web portal, you don't have such a detailed model. Well, it turns out that you can often make simplifying assumptions. So for example, a model that's used very uh, somewhat uh, popular in the industry is uh, you have just a KPI estimator, but uh, the positional effect uh, has this form with the KPI at position P is, you know, your estimate for the KPI at position one times just some static constant factor uh, that depends only on the position, right? And then this would be look like a rank one matrix. Okay, um, so to get to a little bit more details of um, how the modeling goes, just some preliminaries. So we'll want to do this uh, online ranking uh, in a data-driven manner. So for that, we'll need to assume that we have some offline session data for, for uh, many sessions. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, so we, uh, in our particular case, we have lots and lots of data, so we don't need to worry about data itself. Um, the a second thing that we'll need to assume about these sessions is that we'll have, for each session, uh, we'll have these KPI matrices for each KPI, right? So that's what the session logs look like. So that's the data that we have. Um, the second item, uh, just to sort of, again, set preliminaries, is we'll be thinking about permutations and permutation matrices. So a, we'll think of a ranking as a permutation of the items, and we'll represent permutations by matrices. So how do we do that? Uh, permutation over uh, n items can be thought of an n by n matrix, where the, so this matrix has exactly n ones and all the other entries are zero. Each row and each column uh, of this matrix has exactly one one. So the ijth entry is one when item i get assigned to position j and all the other entries are zero, right, uh, in that row. Um, so, so that's about permutation matrices. And finally, we'll make an assumption uh, that's uh, somewhat important uh, and uh, something that uh, so, sort of also one needs to be very mindful of, uh, which is the additive effect model, which says that if you have a KPI matrix that you considered, constructed A, and you picked a, a ranking or a permutation P, the expected value of that KPI for that ranking is going to be the inner product between A and P. Okay, so what that's really saying is essentially something like this, that suppose you showed an ad in position one with revenue R1, and an ad in position three with revenue, let's say, R2. For that particular session, your expected revenue is R1 plus R2. Okay, so it's an additive effect model. Okay. Okay. Um, so the problem of rankings, if you're going to uh, attach or, or uh, assign items to slots, that's really sort of in what's known in combinatorial optimization as a matching problem, or, or more specifically a max weight bipartite matching problem. Um, so the idea is that you have a bunch of nodes on the left, these are the items, a bunch of uh, nodes on the right, these are the positions, and um, a bipartite matching is uh, sort of a, a subset of the edges that kind of assign items to slots. Now, uh, for each KPI, you can think of uh, these edges or, or the weights of these edges as being um, exactly the indices of that KPI matrix. Um, and to solve a uh, max weight bipartite matching problem, fortunately, we have a nice uh, combinatorial algorithm called the Hungarian algorithm. Um, and we'll kind of be using that. But uh, we'll sort of in first take a permutation view of the problem and try to model this problem as a linear programming problem, uh, right? Uh, so we'll think of the max weight bipartite matching problem as a linear program in the following way. So 
Uh, the linear program that we'll be interested in is, uh, in is this one. So we'll want to maximize over P uh, the inner product of C and P. So C is a KPI matrix again. P is the permutation, the set of permutations we're trying to optimize over, subject to P being a permutation matrix. And then we can relax this, uh, 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 this constraint P being permutation matrix to being in the convex hull of permutation matrices. Right? And this is, because the objective function is linear, this relaxation does not lose anything, uh, essentially. Um, and it turns out that sort of this, the convex hull of the set of permutation matrices is actually a very nice polytope. Uh, it's called the Birkhoff polytope. And it's essentially just the set of doubly stochastic matrices, if you've uh, actually heard of them. So um, the set of doubly stochastic matrices is the set of matrices whose row and column sums sum to one and whose entries are non-negative. So, so solving this linear program uh, is actually tractable and, uh, and uh, uh, actually pretty standard. Okay, so, so that was uh, some of the background that we need. Um, now, let me actually get into the actual formulation of the problem. So the way we'll think of this traffic shaping problem that uh, I'm, I'm talk, uh, I want to actually get to is the following. So we want to maximize, so we want to pick rankings so that we maximize engagement. So just the word description of the problem. Subject to our revenue being at least some amount B1, uh, the, the number of clicks to publisher A being at least B2, and so on. And these B1, B2, et cetera, are uh, going to, so, sort of we are assuming that they are going to be given to us by some product considerations. Okay. So this is sort of the problem in words. Um, in equations, uh, this is the problem that we're trying to solve, right? So let's sort of unpack this. Um, so we want to maximize. Now there's a sum over i. The sum is over sessions. So remember we said that we want to maximize these KPIs over many, many sessions. Within each session, we have this inner product of CI and PI. So this is sort of the inner product of the KPI matrix with the permutation matrix. In this case, this is for the engagement. We'll have similarly one for you know, uh, ad revenue. We ha ha we'll have one for publisher A clicks and so on. Okay, so this is again a linear program of the session data. When you solve this linear program, you'll get a bunch of permutation matrices, one for each session. And one can also think about this problem as a combination of or, or concatenation of many, many bipartite matching problems. Because as I mentioned earlier, each inner product of this form is really a bipartite matching problem. So we have for session I, a bipartite, bipartite matching problem involving engagement, involving the first KPI and so on. Okay. Um, so, so as I mentioned, the solution of this actually gives you a, uh, the permutations that you're after. Um, and that's great once, when you're trying to solve that for your offline data. But in an online serving environment, you really don't want to have to solve linear programs, right? Your latency constraints might not allow you to actually do that. Um, so how do we actually get around that and uh, solve this linear program very quickly? Uh, or solve this problem very quickly without solving the linear program? And to get to that, we'll need to use linear programming duality and uh, interpret this linear program's dual variables a little bit. Uh, so essentially what the dual variables of this linear program uh, mean are the f is the following. It attaches relative importance of each of these KPI constraints, right? So it says by default the objective, which is the engagement, has um, a relative importance of one. So uh, you know, this is scale invariant, so we can assume that this is one. Uh, constraint one has some importance, lambda one, which is the optimal dual variable to this linear program uh, with respect to this constraint, and so on. Constraint two is lambda two, and so on. So we can think of these uh, importances as being prices, uh, which convey how much weight to assign to each KPI when we're trying to do the online rank. Okay. So. Um, uh, again, so uh, recall that in each session, we have a bunch of different simultaneous bipartite matching problems that are going on, one for engagement, one for revenue, one for publisher A clicks, and so on. And what these dual variables, the dual prices allow you to do 
is combine all of these bipartite matching problems by assigning these relative weights and then combining it into a single, one single bipartite matching problem, which you can then solve. Okay? Uh, so the actual algorithm for our online ranking is the following. So you take your offline data, solve the dual LP on the historical data, get the prices, and then online you just solve this weighted bipartite matching problem with respect to these dual variables. Okay? Um, and uh, so uh, one sort of subtle point here is that whether or not you can actually implement the Hungarian algorithm at runtime, it depends on the number of documents that you're trying to rank at runtime. Um, if, you f if you think that you can't, then you could always use a greedy algorithm to actually solve the bipartite matching problem. And um, it has a sort of worst case uh, sort of competitive ratio of a half, but in, in, pra in practice it actually gives something a lot better. Um, so um, you can also sort of uh, prove rigorous theoretical guarantees about the performance of this algorithm. Um, so let me just say a, a little bit about, uh, about these guarantees. So <clears throat> to um, uh, the quantity that we're going to give guarantees about is called the competitive ratio. So what is this competitive ratio? Uh, so we look at sort of an oracle, so remember this is an online problem. Um, and so uh, if you have an oracle who has access or sort of is omniscient and knows what events are going to arrive in the future, uh, what that omniscient uh, sort of oracle would do is solve that linear program with all this data upfront, right? And that would give you the optimal solution. Uh, the online algorithm does not have access to that information. So the optimal solution to that will denote by or the solution or the sort of reward that is accumulated by that we'll call opt hat. And the competitive ratio is the f ratio of opt hat to opt. And essentially, Ethereum says that you can get very close to uh, a competitive ratio of one. Uh, and it makes certain sort of uh, mild assumptions about the distribution. And uh, I won't say much about the proof, but it uses something called the primal dual method, which is quite standard in uh, combinatorial optimization. Uh, so we, some, uh, we, tr we, we ran some experiments, uh, both offline and online in a bucket on Yahoo data. Um, and uh, in, in this experiment, our objective was engagement. Uh, our constraints uh, were uh, uh, delivering a certain number of impressions to premium impressions to uh, two publishers. Uh, plus, we also had a constraint on how newsy our uh, stream looked. So basically, each item came with a newsiness score, and we cared about how much newsiness was in, uh, uh, in, in the stream. And um, so, so these were sort of the constraints. And uh, uh, essentially, what this plot shows is that as you increase the number of historical sessions to learn these dual prices, they, they stabilize to the correct values and that you get a competitive ratio of 0.98. Uh, uh, and um, I'd also like to add that sort of while I talked about the problem of actually uh, shaping or doing uh, online ranking, the same approach can also be used for uh, related problems such as capacity sizing. So for example, tomorrow if you wanted to add one more constraint or remove a bunch of constraints, uh, you might want to understand what the trade-offs look like, how much engagement you would lose for uh, kind of adding uh, an additional constraint. And here, sort of, you have a plot like that uh, where you can actually compute uh, uh, and quantify these trade-offs, uh, which could be very useful and insightful to uh, product people. Uh, you could also use it for joint ranking of ads and content. Uh, and there's a bunch of sort of uh, future directions uh, that uh, one could look at. Finally, I want to mention some uh, related work in this area. Uh, so there has been uh, some nice work on uh, traffic shaping and click shaping uh, in, in the past. Uh, so there's an uh, uh, interesting line of work by Deepak Agarwal et al. Um, uh, in this area. Uh, also some work by uh, Chakrabarti et al. Um, which was specific to sort of uh, jointly ranking ads and, uh, or mixing ads and content. Uh, and for the most part, uh, we found that uh, uh, sort of these approaches handed, handled the single slot case where uh, in, so if you have these multiple traffic shaping constraints, in each session you sort of randomly pick 
uh, with some probability that's uh, informed uh, by, by historical data, uh, which constraint to try to satisfy in that session, uh, but not the simultaneous ranking of items to satisfy this. Um, and uh, this past work also, it didn't really seem to have any uh, sort of rigorous grounding in theory. Um, so the baselines we tried uh, in, in our uh, sort of earlier experiments were essentially grid search uh, because we found that for the full ranking case, uh, we didn't think, or we were not aware of any other principal baselines. Um, so with that, I think I should conclude. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.